Hi, I'm Aaron Miller, and today I'm going to be talking about measuring and finding your composition and drawing. Um, I've brought a couple of different viewfinders with me, which are a simple tool for cropping out everything outside of what I'm going to be thinking about as my composition. And since I'm not honed in on something specific, I can move this around to be a little more playful with finding specifically what I want to draw. These you can uh, change the distance if you're holding it from yourself, and that actually changes the relationship of the size of the viewfinder to what you're actually looking at. So you can hold it very far away to have a much closer and more cropped composition, or you can hold it closer to your face, and that allows you to have a much larger um, inclusive composition. Sometimes you'll find that it's nice to have a viewfinder where you can vary the size a little bit. So this is actually two pieces of mat board which are attached to each other using paper clips, which allows me to change this format of my viewfinder. So I've got my larger viewfinder set up um, so I can have a much better sense of a larger composition. With the smaller one, that would have been very difficult to kind of get the amount that I want to include in this. And you can see I've set it up so I have a nice amount of the negative space going around the figures, and I've also included um, the little stand that the figure is sitting on. Um, and it, the most important part is probably kind of the relationship between the skeleton and the figure of the lady and kind of how his arm is draping. So that's actually taking up the majority of the composition. So I've kind of set it up in a place where I'm happy with what's included and what's being cropped. And in an ideal world, I would be able to include it's not going to fit very elegantly in kind of the size of paper that I'm working at. Um, if it were much larger, like 24 by 36 or up, you know, I would feel a little bit more comfortable adding that kind of space around everything. So this is a composition that I'm fairly happy with, and it kind of gives me the aesthetic that I want to, that I need. And these are the kind of choices you want to be making at this stage in your drawing: is what's included and what's cropped out, um, because that's very difficult to do once you've already started. Okay. So I've got my viewfinder set up. Uh, I'm just going to use Sharpie since these are thumbnails, and I'm not really concerned over how the end product of my thumbnails is going to look. They're just for compositional reference. Um, so now I can kind of copy down the same series of relationships. So where the skeleton is sitting inside of my frame, um, kind of where he's crossing off the edge of the frame. So I'm just kind of doing kind of a gestural drawing, finding my way around the composition and copying down all of the specific um, measurements as I can with just eyeballing it quickly, right? Um, and this is just to put it down on paper so I can assess it before I invest a lot of time um, in something which, you know, I could tweak or make a little bit more successful in really simple, easy ways. So I've got my figure sitting here on the table. I've got just kind of the general shape of my skeleton standing behind her. Um, all of this is kind of black space, so I'll kind of just mock that in a little bit to kind of give me a little bit of sense of, of how that's sitting. Um, and that's kind of me just copying down where I have my viewfinder. Now I can pull that away and just assess this if there's anything that needs to be changed kind of graphically in the composition of the drawing. Um, and for right now, I think I'm actually fairly happy with this, so I'm not going to change it too much or even develop another thumbnail. I think I'm just going to start from there. Uh, so this part's pretty fast, and I'm just trying to transfer the composition onto my final drawing surface. So I've got my thumbnail, and I can still kind of reference the still life, but mostly I'm being I'm working very, very general, so it's not even necessary for me to look really at the specifics. I'm kind of more interested in where the top of the skeleton is and kind of where he's falling off the edge, kind of where um, the skeleton is in relationship to the edge of my page. I can see when I'm looking at my thumbnail and also when I'm looking at the still life that the bust's head is lower in my composition than my skeleton's head. So I'm using these kind of organizational lines to just really quickly map out over my entire page where, the, where all the different elements are going to lie. Um, I, can, I didn't really do a good job of kind of capturing the angle of, of the surface she's sitting on, so I'm actually pulling that off the still life, um, kind of capturing the direction of his hand. Um, kind of maybe capturing this negative space between the figure and the skeleton. Um, so just really giving myself some landmarks from the still life for the next process. 
Okay, so the next step is to get a couple of more specific measurements for my drawing to make sure that what I've just loosely mapped out here is accurate before I spend a whole lot of time just, you know, like finally rendering. And that's a big temptation when you're drawing is to like go right directly into a face and spend hours and hours rendering a person's eyeballs before you even know that that's exactly the, the placement and, and scale that their head is supposed to be to fit in with your whole composition. One simple method is to measure angles using this kind of angle finder, um, which is just a little uh, brass doohickey and two pieces of map board. Um, and the way that you use these is you hold the bottom part parallel to the ground and then you use this to capture a specific angle in your composition. So if I was looking at the angle of the skeleton's arm, I would hold this parallel to the floor and put this exactly at the angle that the skeleton's arm is um, diagonally. And then you just keep this parallel to the floor and you can actually move it over to your page and you have that exact same information. So you can see that my skeleton's arm angle that I put on here is actually quite significantly off. Um, there's actually a simpler way of doing that just with your drawing utensil um, where you don't have to have uh, like the special little angle, angle finder um, but it's a little less reliable which is where you just hold up your implement right up against the angle you're trying to measure um, and you always want to keep your arm fully extended so there's no variation when you're moving from one place to another. So fully extended, you put your utensil over the angle that you're trying to measure, and then you just turn your body, right? So you don't move your arm, because um, that tends to adjust the angle a little bit. You just move your whole body, and you can see I get a kind of similar measurement. Um, so this is kind of more where the skeleton's arm is going, rather than this last line that I put on here. Um, so I know that this is a little bit more accurate information. You can also very easily measure the proportions of things. And the way that you do that is you kind of pick something in there which is a significant part of your composition. And heads are a great thing to start measuring. Um, and that's what I'm going to use for this example. I'm just going to measure the, the head of the figure and see how many heads high she is. And that gives me a ratio which I can apply to my drawing over here and make sure that her head is appropriately high for how big I've made her in this composition, right? Um, so similar to when I was measuring the angle, you want to keep your arm fully extended. I've switched to a longer drawing implement just so that I have enough to hold on to and do the measuring. Um, and you just put the tip of your pencil at the top of what you're measuring and you hold your thumb at the bottom of what you're measuring. And then when my arm is fully extended, this is, this is going to be a consistent measurement. So I could actually measure anything in my entire composition and compare it to the size of the figure's head. And for this example, I'm just going to measure how high the figure is herself. So starting at the top of her head and down to the bottom of her chin, I'll move it down. That's another full head length and then move it down. And that's almost exactly another full head length. So I know that the figure is three heads high, right? So then if I come over to my drawing over here, I know that since my figure is stopping here and stopping here, that one third of this distance is going to be the size of my figure's head, right? Um, and I'm just going to kind of roughly guesstimate to try and measure it. So I'm going to do, do the same thing, put my thumb down at the bottom of my measurement and my the tip of my pencil up at the top and kind of measure it. Um, and that's much too big, right? And that's this mark here, um, which I had kind of kind of just thrown in there as, as her head. So I know that that's much too big and I'll move my measurement up a little bit, two, three, and that's about right. And that's about this measurement here. So I know that this distance is the, the figure's head and this ratio is correct for the rest of my drawing. So this is kind of like a weight off my chest for later in the drawing. Um, I can actually use the same measurement other places in the drawing. So how long is, is her arm in um, terms of the height of her head, right? Uh, and I can see that it's a tiny bit bigger, right? And that's something which I can easily move down here and just make the length of her arm a little bit bigger than the size of her head. Um, so it's starting to give me a little bit of framework um, for how everything is laying out that I know is specifically accurate to the still life I'm looking at. Um, and the last thing I'm going to show you is a little bit more arbitrary me method of measuring, um, which is kind of using a grid or um, kind of uh, more 
geometric ways of dividing your, your drawing surface. Um, and you can see I've got this little piece of acetate which has a grid drawn over it. Um, and this is something which I can move from my drawing um, over to the still life. I can use in either place to kind of like break it up into smaller, more even parts that don't necessarily correlate to structures in the drawing, but I can start to use it to break them down into even measurements without having to rely on my thumb for breaking apart. Uh, a very simple way of doing this without using the grid is just to quickly draw some even breaks in your drawing, right? So you can put these little organizational lines and say this is about halfway through my drawing, this is about halfway through my drawing, and then when I transpose my grid over top of them, um, I can use it like a viewfinder that I'm looking through and see what's falling across the center line through my whole composition and then come over here and make sure that all those points are matching up properly. This is basically a, a group of tools for helping you lay out your composition over your page um, and is a great way to start a drawing because it gives you specific information that you know is accurate um, so you don't have to worry about where to start your drawing um, and when you start going into the finer details, you know that all your proportions are correct, so you don't have to erase and rework your drawing. Um, so that's measuring and finding your composition.